Charles and people like that. And I took my video camera and I always give Ben a little bit of footage if he needs it for his reports. Mm. And he kindly gave me a little bit of footage that I couldn't get of the organiser chatting to Ben because I was busy doing other bits and pieces. So I put together this little probe report and I was too late to add it into our last show. Um, So it's definitely going to go in between part one of this show and part two of this show. It's only about 12 minutes long. So (coughs) if you want to see it ahead of the schedule, just go on my Facebook yeah. page uh, and scroll down, you'll see it, Probe Report, or I can email it to you if you want to see, if you can't find that link or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but I think I sent it to you, Nick, so you can watch it as well. I know yeah. when you interviewed me, I put my foot in it because I said, oh, I've really enjoyed my first probe. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> it. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> hysteric, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, That might not be the wisest thing to say. <laughs> It was actually, I mean, it was nice to have Probe back, but um, there was a, there was a, it's a, I only counted about between 50 to 60 people there. Yeah. Oh, here's Andy. He's here. Hello. Didn't, I, how did you manage to get in? You just joined conversation or something. I don't know how you did it. That's cool. I think oh, so. Cause, oh, because I called you and you were unavailable. So you must have somehow picked up the call or something and, and jumped in or something. Yeah, uh, possibly it just said join call and it was a green oh, button, so I clicked that's it. That's easy enough then. That's easy enough. Um, yeah, so we got we got Julie and Nick back, so Hello. we're going to carry on our Hi, uh, discussions on everything really. Draco reptilians. Um, um, forget the other races now. My mind's a blank that you have connected. Hey. Arturians, yeah. lion beings, uh, 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 fae, Sasquatch. The one that you said you're from. Or your connected bloodline to? Or... Well, that's, uh, well, I didn't say one bloodline I won't talk about, but um, uh, Palladians is. Palladians, that's it. That's yeah. it. And Nick talks about yeah. the Palladians. That's why I thought yeah. you could talk about the Palladians and be interested to get each other's take on the Palladians, your perspective, Nick, and Judy's perspective. Is yeah. there a connection between you? And uh, I thought we'd do it 45 minutes each. We normally do an hour each, but because I'm putting this big segment in about 12, 13 minutes of my report, um oh yeah he just put that up there yeah um i did see a thing about that Andy. either i haven't actually yeah. looked into it yet hundreds of ufos swarming a ship so yeah. dozens of sailors are basically saying that hundreds not one hundreds of ufos are absolutely swarming their navy ships wow they, they mm. can't they can't really um suppress this anymore they can yeah. try but they, yeah you know there must be so many people on board that ship with phone cameras and things like that yeah. yeah, there's only so many people you can say, well, don't talk about it, Shh. you know. Mm. Mm. Well, unless right. they I love them. get mind control, but then it doesn't always, yeah. you got so many, and in that situation, unlikely. I, lo- I oh, love the a- North Korean music you put over the censored bit. Yeah, well, you supplied <laughs> so it. So funny. Yeah, just to explain, um, we when we did our last recording, we were talking about all, all things jabby and medical and stuff like that. And I uploaded it to YouTube and about three, four days later, suddenly it had gone from YouTube. And I thought, oh, I pretty much know why that would be then. And I got this message from YouTube. Yours has been taken down. You probably didn't mean it. Blah, blah, blah. And I thought, well, we did mean it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, good. Um, I thought, well, OK, I better re-edit it. But I looked for an alternative. I uploaded it to Rumble, which is an alternative to YouTube. And they don't seem to censor anything apart from really dodgy stuff i suppose i don't know um but the beauty of rumble is the fact that uh anything i upload to youtube is automatically pulled over to my new rumble account so i don't have to go to rumble then re-upload it there it automatically sucks it across which is good um however it just means that um if we want to say anything dodgy we can do it just means it's a headache for me that i have to then kind of re-edit two versions of it if you like and and spend time encoding one and then coding another and stuff like that Neil, but, do you um, reckon do you reckon it's algorithms listening for uh, uh key words or do you think it's a little man in a dark room uh keeping an eye on conspiracy stuff i for them? i i suspect what it is it's it's artificial intelligence mm. pulls it up to the top of the list then they get someone to watch it oh i thing. see that's yeah. what i think as a personal You're thing right um you know, they, they look for anything like jab, word like jab, and we say jibby jabs, and that comes up, you know, um, and Fauci, uh, you know, 
COVID, anything like that could, must come to their head. Could we just replace the word Fauci with cunt? <laughs> could we just do that? <laughs> Artificial intelligence would pull it way up the very top. <laughs> We'd be flagged on all sorts of all sorts of watch lists then, wouldn't we? Yeah. I think if, if you're not on some kind of FBI list, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. If you're not targeted or if you're not uh, have hassle, then I don't think you're quite hitting the nail on the head. Yeah. <laughs> so what we have to do, explain to our listeners uh, and apologise and, and say why. Um, right, Nick, you're recording. That's great. That's fine. It saves me yeah. recording it. We'll all be able to get a copy of this. Uh, it'll appear in the chat box, but I'll, you can download it your end if you like. I'll download it yeah. my end as tool. It'll be there for 30 days. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so if everyone's ready to rock and roll, we can count us in. Andy, did you want to introduce it? Um, okay, okay. Okay, so we'll do 45 minutes rather than 50, 50 or 47 minutes or something. I can't remember, 57 minutes. And I'll just put my timer on. Um, Stopwatch. Okay, Paranormal Peep Show uh, with Julie Phelps, Nick Sands, Neil Ward, and Andy Chaplin. Coming to us in 10. So me and Andy have a pre-chat and then we'll say welcome like we did last time. So for the pre-chat, you'll be hidden from the screens. So just keep quiet, but you don't have to touch any buttons or press any screens or anything like that. OK, here we go then. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Hi, folks, you're listening to the Paranormal Peep Show with myself, Andy Chaplin and Neil Geddes Ward. Neil, how are you doing? I'm fine, Andy. I'm fine. I've, I've been really busy uh, over the summer building a summer house, which uh, is the Ooh. kind of sequel to my dad's um, untimely death. We inherited his summer house. So out of a negative comes a positive. So we're enjoying the fruits of that labor. Um, so, so are, are you kind of dismantling it and then reassembling well, it? That, that's, that's what we did do. Yeah, we basically had to dismantle it uh, at the back of his garden, uh, took a hire van, 3.5 ton Luton van up to his place, dismantled the whole thing, drove it to my girlfriend's house. Uh, put it all um, against the fence in her back garden. And then on a suitable day when we could get help from her brother-in-law, uh, two of us, me and him, put the whole thing together. I followed his guidance because he's the expert in putting up things. I'm more than the expert in knocking things down. Um, <laughs> and we put the whole thing up and we've actually got further than my dad ever did with it. Because my dad had only kind of, this is the irony, had only recently got the bloody thing up. <laughs> so... He was going to invite us around for a, like a big summer party. And unfortunately, he wasn't uh, around to, to finish that task. So uh, we've now gone that step further. I've managed to put uh, salvage some of the carpet from his house and actually put that in the summer house. And uh, we've got a Z bed, which we inherited from him. We put that at the end of the in the room and we've got electricity in there now. So it's a nice little meditation room. If people like to do meditation, it feels really relaxing in there. And mm. it's a nice little chill out room. It's away from TV, Wi-Fi. Um, any you know i don't do video games but anything like that just uh almost almost electricity free but we do have it for the lights and stuff but it's just a nice little chill out room you can read and stuff and the final touch that we'll put in there is uh two drawings that i've actually made as tiny prints i've still got to get the frames from to put um of my mum and dad because it's in mm. in their honor if you like yeah uh, Put that in the summer house as well to remember them by so it's a nice little touch that's a good idea yeah, yeah. So, so, i think everyone needs like a little man cave or, or escape well room, yeah thing. the trouble is <laughs> i'd like to think it's my man cave but it seems to be my daughter's man cave my, my, <laughs> my girlfriend's daughter's man cave because every time she comes around there she dives into the summer house and i won't come out till it's time to go to bed bed proper you uh, wait there'll be a jacuzzi next and a pool party and all yeah that absolutely absolutely i've just got to wait for the inheritance how am i going to get a pool here that's the interesting <laughs> i think the, the nearest i'll get to that is inheriting a paddling pool um yeah. how have you been though yeah pretty good pretty good um i i, I noticed uh <laughs> i noticed we got censored in one of our in one yep. of our episodes <laughs> that's and, right uh, yeah. as a tribute i'd like to put on some kim jong-un glasses uh to ah. this is my tribute to a wonderful youtube who who very gracefully decided with their communist uh, propaganda um policies to censor our wonderful show so we're not allowed to talk about a certain something we so let we we can't even mention what the certain something is because the censors will jump in so yeah. I'm, I'm just going to kind of like put these on to kind of disguise myself 
On the plus side, though, uh, for anyone that wants to find out what that certain something was, they can actually go to our new Rumble account on the alternative platform uh, to, to YouTube called Rumble, which is where the UK column now put their uh, broadcasts on. So I tend to catch up on UK column news for that. Um, and uh, our shows automatically get uploaded. In fact, all our previous shows have automatically all been uploaded to Rumble as well. Uh, we weren't censored on Spreaker, which is the audio version which goes out on the Paranormal UK radio network. Mm. Um, so thank you, Spreaker, for not uh, shutting our mouths up. And, you know, uh, I think everyone's entitled to an opinion, really. And, yeah. and the fact is that yeah. uh, we're being zipped shows to um, me there's some sort of agenda going on. And we, we, we always state, don't we, we say that it's up to everyone to to find out their own information and their own sources and not to just trust what we say or trust what anyone else says, to, to, to literally do your own research and come to your own opinion. And that's all we're saying um, throughout. But we got censored. So uh, for anyone uh, watching us on YouTube, please uh, put on your Kim Jong-un glasses <laughs> and just clap for dear leader and smile. smile I, and I, I actually have a feeling that with those glasses, you'll see the aliens through that. You'll see people that have got alien faces through their special glasses. Like oh, they're what's, that, what's that film? They Live, isn't it? They Live, yeah. Yeah, which is where the guy finds the glasses on a building site or something like that. And as soon as he puts them on, he yeah. starts to see aliens amongst the humans and he sees all these adverts <laughs> that are saying buy buy consume consume and things like that i think it was and, uh, and take your no no yeah. no no say that no no take no take <laughs> yeah and, and obviously going into that for all our shows for a anything that people want to you know if they want to take on board what we discuss with these uh, our guests uh that's fine if they don't believe us that's fine if they just use it as a jumping off point to lead into other research that's fine you know um everyone has to take away their own opinions of whatever we talk about, whether it's ghosts, mm. UFOs, aliens, spirits, um, alternative dimensions. If they don't believe us, that's their own prerogative. You know, it's up to them. Really. It. It's, it's, it's our job is to put information out and it's other people's job to kind of disseminate what is true for them or what they what rabbit hole they want to go down. And it's not for us to say, you must believe this. It's for us to say, look, this is we've got some very interesting guests. This is kind of like our opinions on it. Make your own mind up. And on, on a serious note, there's some actually some quite dangerous bills going through Parliament um, that are threatening freedom of speech, all under the guise of protecting you on the internet, protecting you against dangerous misinformation. The problem is, who decides what is misinformation and what is real information? Oh, the state. Well, now we're back mm. to Kim Jong Un glasses and yeah. the leader. Yeah, you know, yeah, so exactly. It's, um, it's dangerous. It's actually dangerous for freedom of speech. It, it is the old Big Brother thing, you know. You must think what we think or follow our thoughts and things like that. You're no longer allowed to have an opinion or even discuss discuss your opinion with other people the state opinion is the official version and nothing else will will, will stand by it basically and it's so horrendous. it's i mean i mean can, can, can anyone tell me the difference between that what you've just said what we've just discussed here and north korea yeah can anyone yeah. tell me the difference between you must follow the state line and anything else is dangerous dis disinformation and and north korea putting out that communism is fantastic and anything to do with capitalism is uh pig dog lies <laughs> you mm. know it's, mm. exactly it's, it's, it's you know it's dangerous really dangerous yeah, yeah. Uh, um happy clappy basically happy clappy. it's uh, happy clappy for the government yeah um well i think now we're bringing on our dissenters um <laughs> I'll take off my <laughs> this month. glasses now, I think. <laughs> uh, before they get cuffed and handed in. Um, <laughs> uh, we'd like to welcome back two guests that we've had on previously. Uh, one very recently, actually in our last episode, the one that was taken off air. Not through her fault, but because of our fault of discussing things. But I'm sure that uh, she would have her opinions on that. Uh, welcome back to Julie Phelps. Are you there, Julie? I am, yes. Hello, Hello. Julie. Welcome could, back. Julie, could you just clap for dear leader? Just, just, just oh. clap dear, and smile. Clap and smile. Thank you. <laughs> just to keep YouTube happy. Brilliant. And also, welcome back uh, to a previous guest that's appeared with us twice before, I believe, and that's Nick Sands. Are you there, Nick? Yeah. Hello, Nick. I know. Nick, could you just, could you just clap for dear leader and just smile? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can there put my reading glasses on to look like him. <laughs> <laughs> just to keep YouTube happy. Brilliant. <laughs> brilliant well uh now that youtube I, I suppose their artificial intelligence has run past this far and allowed us to continue broadcasting <laughs> um you never so know uh, whilst we're still safely fingers crossed on air um 
Now, we spoke to Judy last month about Draco reptilians and uh, all kinds of interesting things. And we covered a wide range of things, but we really kind of ran out of time to go into the deeper rabbit hole. So I thought it'd be great if we kind of followed up with some of the things that you discussed. But also thought it'd be great that we've had Nick on talking about similar things and his encounters and Nick's seen uh, UFO crashes and things like that. And I also understand that Nick has interviewed Julie. So I thought, ah. Oh, they're both connected anyway, so I'm sure they've got a lot to say for themselves. And the way I'd like to see this go uh, is that everyone just pitch in, you know, just rather than me keep asking questions or Annie keep asking questions, you maybe want to ask each other questions as well and just to see where we go with things. So, um, I mean, one of the questions I wanted to ask Julie, uh, because I've obviously re-listened back to our show and trying to take on board all the points, um, you, you mentioned that uh, you and your husband uh, were taken to uh you but you were kidnapped or something by by the military or someone and and put in this line and you woke up or something out of a trance or i presume i'm not quite sure what it was where where you saw these draco reptilians um, funneling people into this building to basically kill them um yeah. was you living in canada at the time or I was you yes. right so so this place and you said you found it on google earth where was this place that you were taken to again it was uh, not far from Radar Station Hill, Dulce, uh, which is New Mexico area. Right, right. Which is well known for reptilians. And I've got friends who lived in the area there. And they told me that a lot of the farmers in the area were under mind control. It's an area where they get a lot of cattle mutation, uh, mutilations. And also, and it's well known, Area 51 and also um, this lake, uh, this, the other base, which is, uh, what was it, something lake there uh, that John Lear talked about. Oh, Groom Lake? Lake. Yeah, Groom Lake and things yeah. like that. All sort of similar sort of area. But the arid hot temperatures are more uh synonymous with reptilians it's like um the Aus the australian um uh the radar station there which i can't remember right this minute pine oh, gap. yeah pine gap. pine gap yeah yeah pine gap don't know why it slipped my mind then <laughs> <laughs> well, when, you, yeah. when you say the farmers are mind controlled can you give us some examples of what they mean by that well, one of my friends, as I said, lived around there. She, she was uh, within a banking, quite high up in banking. So she she literally was mixing with senators and even some of the, you know, uh, when um, Ronald Reagan and stuff were in power, things like that. So uh, Epstein was in the area at times, things mm. like that. But they're all linked. So it's all connected. Um, and she was telling me that a water, she knew a water inspector who went around the area and uh, he, he was a friend of theirs. And, you know, he nearly got shot going on one of these farms and he reported how these farmers reacted was not normal. It was like they're in a state of kind of semi hypnosis uh, <laughs> that they were not acting in the right way. But I mean. They're in the area where Draco are. You know, they don't, Draco don't live on the surface. So it was unusual to see they were Draco soldiers, not Alpha Draco, um, uh, which are the kind of wings. These were soldiers. They had like tabards on, like mm. uh, soldier type tabards. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, and I still, I, I realize I still suffer a little bit post-traumatic stress disorder from that although I, I work on it because I've got a degree in psychology and that so I'm able to cope with a lot of things because I just uh, analyze myself and I've got lots of friends I can talk to so who have similar experiences so why why would I mean you talked about the temperature uh, and uh, the reptilians uh, I mean the obvious question that a lot of people say, well, hang on, if these people are, or aliens are going around in flying saucers, why don't they just take you up in their flying saucers and do what they have to do to you and then, you know, dispose of the corpse or whatever they're planning to do with you? Why would they use uh, a, an, an Earth building, which I would have thought would be a fairly risky procedure, considering the amount of people going to go in there and scream and all sorts of things? Would that be discoverable or is it no, so it's secure? Totally, it's totally isolated if you look on the google map you can follow the you know the one i shared uh, mm, totally mm. isolated and it's controlled that area you wouldn't if you 
it's a sort of area if you wandered off the path there as my friend said you ain't coming out alive <laughs> right, right so there's not just guards there's other people that will the, the kind of these farmers tend to turn psychopathic so they would tend to shoot you anyway and it's in an area that's very very isolated um and right next to it you see on the map there's like a dome you can see by the shadow it's a dome it's a bit like a has when we uh in the forces which is an underground entrance you can see that on the map now, I literally had to search around for this and I, I took weeks and days, well, days and days and days trying to search. I knew what area it was because, I, you know, I obviously recall exactly what the terrain was like. So I was thinking, where could it be? So I, it did take a lot of searching, uh, but I did eventually find it. And then because I was searching on Google Earth, I got banned from Google Earth. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, then they put this white the huge white triangle diamond it covered the whole of canada and the whole of north america i could not access that part I could... so what 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 did they ban you from they, they banned you from uh viewing that specific area or they from banned Google. Me from seeing any part of america or canada they put okay. a diamond on the whole area and it doesn't matter how i re-logged in it was still <laughs> blanked out that's mental <laughs> So anyway, I went on Google Maps and managed to get it that way. <laughs> but That's yeah, crazy. They, they blocked me out. I tried everything to stop it. I mean, sh yeah. surely logic would say that if there was something they didn't want the public to see, you'd block it out anyway, or just the specific parts. Ah, uh, but there was out. nothing left that was as of. Uh, but there was everything there that I I remembered. Everything mm. was there, like the fencing you could see piled up, like the builders' fencing was still piled. Up. Also, in a pertinent point presumably is that the people that go into that building are not expected to come out alive so they won't be searching on google earth later for it whereas julie oh. managed to escape uh, i didn't escape they i mean there's they no, let you go or something they because i was still an asset at the time their reasoning behind this i'm not sure i still haven't figured out why they allowed us to see this. Why they did this, it's, it's, a very, it's very much a puzzle piece with me as well, because there have been a few other people survived going on ships and seeing humans being dismembered in that. But there's not many of us who witness this firsthand. Most will not witness it because they don't come back from it. So um, this is quite rare, but I was an asset of them. I still had the black goo inside me at that point. So I was still under their mind control. So, um, but their reasoning behind that is a puzzlement to me. I don't really understand that either. And I can only, I can't, you know, I so, can't so get they, mind to say. They, they took you from Canada all the way down to New Mexico oh, yeah, to do this procedure. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it's nothing to them. It was a, yeah. it was a frightener. I mean, it absolutely terrified me. I was absolutely terrified. And they also, they made sure I remembered it. They right. could easily wipe my mind, but they didn't. And they didn't wipe my husband's mind either. So there was a reason why they wanted me to remember that. Uh, why? I'm not really sure. Uh, hey, what's your thoughts on what, what's going on and why? Um, I remember being on the on the base and um, they, they took me underground. And all I remember is I was on like a, a dentist's chair. And um, they were they were doing something to my mind there, and that was to like prep me for the programming for the the shoot down operation. And I, I could never figure out how they got me there, or how they returned me to my bedroom. Something that I, I never found out. Hmm. You you was living alone at the time, is that right, Nick? In, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's no witnesses to you being taken out. And who do you think took you? Was it the military that took you, or? Oh. I think it was probably like a, a reptilian occupation force, but they were they were very adept at sort of manipulating and controlling the armed forces that were there. So so basically, from what I can gather from both what you're saying is that the reptilians are doing sort of mind control on our own military, yeah, using them as pawns in the game as such. Are you right? using mind control on all? like leaders mm. it's very likely the i mean the farsight institute did remote viewing and found that a lot of the leaders in the world are being remotely uh controlled by uh other beings 
Hmm. So not necessarily reptilians, but maybe Orion belt beings, which, you know, negative beings. So a lot of these, we're not awfully sure whether some of these uh, global leaders are actually aware that they've been possessed, basically. Um, it, it reminds me of, uh, and people, most people have probably seen this clip of uh, Bill Clinton getting his makeup done before going on uh, uh, a television interview. And this is probably in the 90s. So the video recording was quite, uh, you know, crappy. Uh, but he was just in an absolute trance. Uh, you, you've probably seen that, Julie. But he's just, he's like this. He's like, <laughs> and they're doing his makeup and it's not kind of like you know sitting still for the makeup he's actually in a trance you know like was, someone's was gonna go monica linsky but just out of shot maybe or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but yeah i mean that's that's kind of scary i mean it's scary having world leaders being as they are but then to go a step further and, uh, and presume that many if not all these world leaders and military people are, are getting controlled by some extent i mean we always talk about demonic forces controlling people like possession of spirits onto people or people being possessed but but perhaps it's like uh the fact that you know higher intelligences can easily override our own i mean if we if we can do hypnosis at a basic level here on earth on people uh, and do neuro linguistic programming uh, these beings are, are capable of far more than that and presumably they're using some sort of technology uh, to a system to amplify their thoughts or something like that to 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 reach into our subconscious they must be aware of our subconscious mind and uh, and even the greys are said to sort of take things from your subconscious mind programs that you might have watched as a child to try and calm you down by using characters that you might have enjoyed as a child like uh, I mean Ronnie Kinsella talked about the Alice in Wonderland Cheshire cat uh, appearing in his room um, after some kind of experience um, so, so Nick, so you, what? I mean, you've got a lot of experiences. Um, is more of yours with the Draco reptilians or another type of reptilians or what? Yeah, um, I first sort of made made contact, telepathic contact with a star intensity light, and that that was the Pleiadians. Pleiadians, right? Okay. Yeah, but soon afterwards, like the the Greys and the reptilians tried to jump on me for it for for being a contactee with them. Right. So mm -hmm. would, would that be the case then, that if the Palladians are trying to make contact with both of you in some way, that, that somehow you, you end up as a bit of a beacon for these other intelligences to say, oh, we've got to control them or try and block that signal to them or something? Because otherwise you become an asset, but a more presumably positive asset, which yeah. is a thorn in their side, I presume. Yeah. Anyone want to come in on that? Yeah. It's like um, you can imagine like a herd of sheep or a herd of cattle. And then you're managing this herd of cattle, which is how they see us or they see us even worse than that. And then one of the cattle decides to wander off in a different direction. And it's like the farmer spots this, get that flipping cow back in the herd. This is and they take it. They send out the dogs to bring you back. So they might use torture to bring you back. They might use other methods or mind control to bring you back. So it's the same thing, basically. That's the level of what they deem. The most you are to a reptilian is a pet. That is the mm -hmm. highest you can be with them. Apart from that, and quite frankly, the vermin is what they see humanity is quite often. So, uh, but they don't like if you, if you become weak, they don't like that. The stronger you are, they'll respect you for it. They'll still attack you, but they'll respect you for it more. So you have to show a stronger hand. And also there's ways to combat their mind control. And we do have capabilities within us developing our psyche, consciousness and perception to actually overcome them. And I've actually stopped them beaming in by calling other beings in. And mm -hmm. I know because my dog picks up on this very much before me um, and you can stop it. Uh, but you normally have to call in higher beings, obviously, to, for support. Mm. But do you think this is why uh, people who believe in, because uh, I've heard this before, people who have abductions and they really believe in Jesus, they call the name Jesus, and maybe uh, whether Jesus um, existed or not, some some kind of being called Jesus or 
or higher being steps in and kind of like blocks the negative do you think that's what's going on i think it's that but it could even be our higher spiritual self is that powerful i'm not sure but i always call friends in because i, I i'm like trying to keep calm i mean the last time one came trying to beam into my garden and this has happened as well when other people have been online with me um i was outside my dog triggered me because she was looking in the direction and she looked scared so I went out to see what was wrong and I could feel um the it starting to beam in and I thought oh sugar every single cell of my body said run <laughs> <laughs> scared very scared but I thought no you're not doing to this to me anymore that's it and then I stood my ground and then I called in the other beings and I refused to move but uh, believe me it doesn't stop that feeling of absolute terror uh it's just that I was like determined and so from that I was learning and then I learned with other people who've come in with me like uh, Chris Fleming it does help my house is haunted. When I was in communication online with him, he felt the Draco starting to come in here. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> window, and I could feel it. And I was like, my dog was woofing and growling. She found, she sussed him straight away. Has she, he? Psychic. She knows. So, so, so this guy on, uh, I'm aware of the show Help My House is Haunted, but I'm not aware of the presenters. Is mm. he? Has he mentioned the fact that some hauntings could be reptilian or is he not allowed to mention this He's on TV? He's not allowed to mention that mm. on, up in TV. I mean, he is now starting to mention a little bit about Faye, but before, like, the producers and that wouldn't really let, allow him to, he had to fight for that mm. uh, because they did one where they had a pixie and they had it on screen, you know, like these devices they've got and everything. Mm. Now, um, he had to fight to even allow that. He wants to do more on the other side of things, but he's having to kind of uh, run a tightrope of what he's allowed to do. So Simon Parks got banned from showing uh, a reptilian thing on ITV this morning, wasn't it? Really? What was, what was he trying to show exactly? So uh, Philip yeah. Schofield and Holly Willoughby were interviewing Simon Parks and he was absolutely fine um, being uh, showing uh, images of greys and things like that uh, and smoke man and gin. Uh, but apparently, for some reason, he wasn't allowed to show like a reptilian being. He just wasn't allowed to show it. And and he's quite open about this and he's done talks about this. So everything else was fine except the reptilian being. Very interesting, isn't it? There's mm. a lot of mind control on the, on the main channels. I know because Miles used to work for BBC. Yeah. Johnson, and also the uh, Sky as well. And mm. he, he talked to me about certain instances where they had these so-called courses and they were literally getting mind controlled. So oh, he's wow. seen like almost like tentacle beings around <laughs> us over i think it was sky it was one of those anyway and it was actually over the building a bit like loads of tentacles coming from like fish sort of thing and that was <laughs> obviously a negative. i've worked at sky as well oh god <laughs> <laughs> in my broadcasting so, career in that building then <laughs> yeah. I, I, I found a picture i found not a picture a a video of bill clinton in his his uh, mind control trance it's on youtube so okay. hasn't been censored yet it might be censored by the time this goes out uh, anyone wanting to have a look, uh, search for the title Bill Clinton Trance, comma, still never explained years later. And it, and I'll put it in the chat box. So you can have a look. And he's absolutely in a trance, hypnotic trance. No yeah. doubt about it. Was, was there accusations that he used to take cocaine or am I just thinking of something? Not, o not only just took, but we've got to be careful here. Uh, this is our not it's not really accusations opinion. It, it was it was it was uh alleged <laughs> but yeah. i think confirmed in mainstream that he was running drugs from arkansas uh along with the cia oh. uh there's the whole uh if, if people want to look into this um we will say for legal reasons allegations um but this went mainstream um drug running arkansas uh bill clinton and you'll have a whole little rabbit hole of that one <laughs> mm. well i know that, that, that all these previous u.s presidents uh who was the one that was ahead of the cia which was bush senior you know so he 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 must have been involved in some pretty dodgy dealings or something like that um being the head of the cia dirty dirty sort of uh, things that he used to get up to uh and he would have been aware of all the kind of drug things going on being the head of the cia i'm absolutely sure you know and, and there was a quote from him, whether it's true or not, saying if the public 
knew what we got up to, they'd hang us from the nearest lamppost or something like that, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, I, 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 I found a film that actually uh, hints, to, to, hints to Clinton, but I don't think actually names him. Uh, the film is American Made, uh, not made as in kind of Handmaid's Tale, American Made as in M-A-D-E, uh, starring uh, Tom Cruise, and this is a report from the uh, New York Post, actually. And it says there's one men mention of Bill Clinton. And this is to do with kind of drug running and uh, yeah, it goes into it. So uh, this is not our allegations. It's not tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. This is mainstream stuff. And we, we also kind of need to bring into uh, the equation the whole uh, Epstein thing. And Ghislaine Maxwell apparently is about to get sentenced or by the time this goes out, probably has been sentenced. Uh, she's on suicide watch. So let's have a look at what that's going on. I mean, we need to talk about the uh, the 26 trips that Bill Clinton um, made to uh, the Epstein Island. And uh, it's, ah. all, it's all like a filthy little viper's nest of incestuous, filthy scum, mm. basically. Well, would the Drake yeah. her reptilians be somehow have a hand in that? Maybe anybody? Uh, I, th I I I would say I was just going to jump on jump in on this one is that if we look at high echelon Illuminati uh, occult rituals and we look at human sacrifice and we look at bloodletting and the reptilian kind of uh, uh, kind of you know alleged kind of like ripping apart of babies and devouring babies and that kind of thing, well um, well let have let's have a look at some of the artwork of John Podesta for instance that's closely tied to the Clintons and let's have a look at the um, the Epstein kind of the blue and white you've probably seen it almost Disney esque kind of building a Masonic looking building on Epstein Island and I wonder what went on in there I don't know what mm. what you guys think about that I well, know they, sort yeah. of things that went on I mean like um, I've come across more people that. We, we found each other, like the lady who we were in the trauma-based mind control. We've, we've connected, so we talk about things. Um, and then another lady, Sophia, who was on um, Miles Johnson, and she was uh, brought up on a South African baby farm. Oh, she yeah. She recognised me in tunnels underneath uh, around Reading area, Milton Keynes. Uh, and she was under there. They had reptilians there. So there's all that connection with between me and others. Um, mm. Theodore or Ted from Super Soldier Talk, he recognised me and I recognised him. And there's others as well. So there's, there's a number of us who recognise each other uh, from these programmes. And, and Epstein, now I never saw this room, but uh, I know Simon described there was a room with eyes as you went into Epstein's house. Now I know why that is because this I took a lot for me to talk about this with Miles, but I can touch on it slightly. Is they're obsessed with taking eyes out. It's like uh, the it's the um, the the left eye. It's to do with Horus and rituals and that. Uh, but it's it's horrific. And this is why they wouldn't be realised on the wall, I just shouldn't think. But that is what they do. They do that as a ritual. So um, that's part of the horrific things they do yeah. when they're killing people. When, when I was on base, actually, they, they threatened to murder my next door neighbour's baby if I didn't comply with the field operation. So they, they had no regard for human life whatsoever. Yeah. Do, do, do you think a lot of that is psychological and they would just do that to to get you to do what they want but yeah. it, it, it's it's rather than they're actually really going to do it it's just no, literally no, they did it no they, they would have done it me yeah. they, they that's what caused my trauma was the boy they they mm. did that to the boy in front of me and then dismembered him in front of me and did awful things and that's what traumatized me because all the time they were blaming me for that because i had to i drew the short straw so i had to pick between the girl and the boy and the girl since as i said i've been in communication with um but it took a lot for me even though i got a degree in psychology to sort of once i recalled these traumas to then integrate that because it's a huge trauma to recall um and yes the cheshire cat and the alice in wonderline program was used with me that was one of the triggers for me to get out of uh, to start processing all this now the cheshire cat was used as a like a demonic 
force like was beamed in when they were traumatized after they were traumatized and when they were programming as a trigger you knew if the cheshire cat come came in you were going to have to do something bad um and then the white rabbit was an escape for me since the white rabbit was there it was like i'm coming out i can be sent home or whatever it was that was like a positive for me the white rabbit Mm. um but they that apparently this was a program they use quite often in my age group later they use different programs they use uh, Wizard of Oz as well with some people mm -hmm. and later on they used uh more electronic forms but I don't think they were as effective as the the terrible aspects that they used with us but it was effective in splitting you that's what their aim was to split so they, they don't care what they do as long as they achieve their goal uh, of splitting you as in uh, traumatizing so much that you separate from your body. Mm -hmm. So uh, literally, spiritually, you separate and then they can then start programming you uh, with whatever they want to program you with. I mean, a lot of mental health institutes will be full of people where they try to split them in too many different um, um personalities you know too many different uh programs you know not programs i can't think of it now but split personalities that type of thing maybe? yeah or, yeah but yeah. it's kind of more than that it's like um disassociation but you, it's about programming different uh, alters i think they call them yeah yeah alters um so the different alters now i only i only had uh four alters but some of them they would experiment in doing a lot more than that and most of them couldn't cope mentally it would they would end up not being able to do anything they just become really bad mental health cases then um but programs are almost unlimited but it's actually the alters if they do too many alters the the mind can't cope with it um so they create these alters because of what they want you to do as an asset and so i mean i have a problem with phones because i try not to use the phone and i do get that awful anxiety with phones because it, they used that in the old days to trigger you with uh codes through the phone um so you pick up the phone and then they beam it in i mean they do that you know like manchurian candidate they do that very easily mm, mm. when you uh managed to retrieve some of this information of when you was a child and witnessed a horrific killing obviously I forget what age you said you was uh, around that point. I mean, it was about around about six, but I'm, yeah. I'm it's, it's around so, age because it was more size wise because of my dyslexia. I don't do right, it. right, okay. But I so, know I was. Do you, you know. do you recollect how you got there? I mean, obviously your parents must have not obviously, you know, were they? You, was you taken away during the night or something? Were, were your parents like just? not aware that you were gone or no, something they weren't aware but you see there's background in that i mean when i try and touch on these things with my mom i only go so far but i've even only got her to the point of even as i start talking about et she blanks over you can see it it's like a, a a shield goes over her um and i've got to the point of like just talking lightly about things um but i've got to to understand about the uh you know, and things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, so she understands that aspect. She under about, understands about deep state. But I realised they've, they've been through mind control. And my dad was in um, in national. Uh, you know, he was he he didn't participate in World War Two. World War Two. But he was uh, afterwards. He you know he did his time there. But he got injured. So he was disappeared for so many months in Germany before he was brought back so that was a question what happened to him in germany before he got back and he was very aryan he was blonde very much sporty and a complete aryan mentality i would say actually mm, mm. Uh, um growing up and he was pretty strict with us too he was a teacher but he was very strict with us yeah um, yeah was it like right. bordering are you, are you saying bordering nazi in terms of like the, the aryan thing yeah i'd say yeah uh, so where, where do you think that's coming from some kind of programming or some or, or... Uh, yeah i think definitely mm. Mm. so would you think that would he he would have to be in place for what later took happened to you at six he, he would have had to be a kind of uh somehow 
uh, the, the the route into you through him in some way, maybe like either saying yes, you can do that, or I don't being I don't controlled think they or something. Had any choice in the matter? I don't think they're aware. They probably just knocked them out and then yeah, yeah, whatever. But to do with bloodlines um, on my mother's side is a lot to do with it. Um, that that I worked out anyway. Um, mm. And of course, I've got my Palladian connection too. But you see, uh, when I was in Canada, they kept, I kept waking up about three o'clock in the morning and I'd find myself at the back door and I'd see a ship outside. But I don't recall going up to the ship. And that happened night after night after night. And that was the beginning of them breaking the mind control. So they were actually helping me um, at that point. Um, and then they, then Simon Parks helped me after my husband uh was suicided he he helped me from that point and he spotted the mind control on me so he spotted it at that point that it was illuminati mind control so he then helped me started to help me deprogram along with the group that I was with as well so that you know it was it was a group effort really uh mm. so it was et and earth humans um mm. that were helping me Nick, with your yeah. experiences of Palladians and things, you, you've yeah. obviously reported back to us that they've helped you sometimes, um, protecting you as well. Are, are they trying yeah. to protect you from greys and reptilians or just the greys? Yeah, um, both of them. It, it started out the, the greys. Um, and when, when the reptilians jumped on me for the field operation, um, they started telling me how to block the programming with music. Mm -hmm. And then, and then after that, I got in touch with a clinical psychologist, um, and he said, "Could you not ask your friends for any any other help with that?" And I thought they won't be able to do that. And I thought, "Well, I'll, I'll request it anyway." So I requested more help, and and they're able to like block the mind control program in in situ and on the go. I've, I've no idea how how they do it, but I'm I'm very grateful they're able to do it. Out of um, interest, what kind of music blocks it? Um, just any any kind of music and I'll, I'll even take sort of like waterproof music devices with me just to, mm. to block it as well yeah right mm. so uh, does that mean you've got to listen to music pretty much 24 7 to stop <laughs> this kind of thing or, or, um, or just at certain key times in the day or night or something yeah just sometimes i'll have music on for hours and hours just to block it yeah yeah, yeah. and and you found since that music you're, you're having less intrusions or problems with these yeah things. and, and they, they put like some kind of a high frequency block on now so i don't have to listen to as much music yeah. i see i see okay yeah. so it's almost like uh they're, they're, they're screening you against any attacks with this high frequency thing um yeah. have you tried music julie to block out any attacks i from... don't need to because i got um an intervention from a group and a friend of mine when i was being electronically attacked with microwaving which was frying my inside burning my skin my eyes my head everything and i just about survived earlier and the Pleiadians helped me and i went down to the lake and i got healed but then again they started another attack anyway uh, one of the group she brought in higher dimensional beings while we were online and at first they seemed to be altering it so they seemed to be increasing the microwaving as they were beaming in the positive but it, so it got to such a point that it snapped and then it totally stopped their ability to get through so i was like thank god for that you know <laughs> i was just watching it yesterday because i've got it on video I've got all this on video. That's the thing, but I can't share it because everybody in the group is on it. So if I share it, because that they're anon, you know, they want to remain anonymous. But mm. um, uh, but yeah, it showed it then that um, what occurred. Uh, so they helped me then tune into that higher frequency, which is a very high frequency, uh, and I can block it now. I uh, see. So, so you, you control it with your own power to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see. Mm. Now, you made an interesting point about videos and things like that. Now, one of the uh, people on uh, Ben Evelyn Jones's YouTube, I uh, can't remember which person it was, made a comment uh, to, to his own pro video, uh, which uh, we all attended. Most of us attended. Anyway, some of us did. Uh, the probe conference in Lytham St. Anne's. And he said... It's funny how that all these people never present one bit of evidence during their talks. 
And I, I was thinking, hang on a minute. Was you actually there? You know, you didn't go to the probe conference, so you don't know exactly who said what. And yet you make that accusation that no one presents any evidence uh, from the comfiness of your armchair. <laughs> and, uh, and and yet there's loads of people there. And I mean, I was presenting evidence. I, I gave out links uh, in my talks to say, look, if you want to follow this up, go to this website, go to that website and go to that website. I even presented evidence of uh, communication uh, with an Ouija board through my mum. Now, if people don't believe that, that that's really up to them. <clears> at the end, of the day. I'm not going to force them to believe in things, but it's a presentation of evidence, no doubt. Anyway, um, now uh, when people talk to you about reptilians and uh, you know, you say, uh, uh, Andy, you were saying that um, Simon Parks wasn't allowed to show the reptilian image on mainstream TV. Mm. Do do you get asked for things like, can we see some photographs or video? I mean, you mentioned the video, but you can't show because your friends are in it and things. Do you, do you get like uh, maybe mainstream people asking you this? I don't know if you've ever done I mainstream. Never, I won't do BBC or anybody like that. They're not doing that to me because they just do a hatchet job on you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, as far as I can care. I, I don't care. Um but um, I'm quite happy to share what I can with videos because I have got videos with um, you can see like uh, energies around me. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, you know, then you get the people saying, well, that's CGI or something like that. Mm. Well, I know it's not, but yeah. I have photographs of craft. But again, yeah. these days people say, well, it, but it's up to them what they accept and what they don't. All I can go is my own experience. And the only reason I share, because I'm not, you know, I'm only sharing so that other people can relate. They may resonate, they may not. And I don't, you know, it's up to them what path they're on and what journey they're on. Um, I'm only sharing these. I mean, the original sharing with James Ring with Super Soldier Talk was I didn't think I was going to survive afterwards because because of the target they got. So I thought at least it's out there in the ether. If yes. they kick me out, I thought, well, you know, I've got nothing to lose. Mm. So that mm. level of tax I've had. In a sense, you're both putting these accounts, these experiences of yours on record, whether it's through Miles or through us or other channels or whatever. And at the end of the day, uh, the way I perceive it anyway, is that you're not making money from this. If anything, you're perhaps losing money uh, through. Um, and also the thing is you're putting your names on the line. You know, you're not coming under some pseudonym. You're, you're giving your full names. And yet all these people that accuse you of things on YouTube, they always have their little pseudonym. You know, they're, they're, they're not their real names or they make up some name, but they're accusers of this, accusers of no evidence, accusers of that, blah, 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 blah. But you're actually putting your names on the line, which I think is, is very admirable. Yeah. Uh, personally. Uh, yeah. Right, I think what we'll do now, we'll take a break here on the Paranormal Peeps show. We're talking to Julie Phelps, Nick Sands, uh, and we're talking about Draco Reptilians, Greys, Mind Control, all sorts of things. We're continuation from uh, last month's episode, and we're moving into hopefully deeper waters. Uh, and we just mentioned the probe conference a few seconds ago. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a break now, and we're going to take a look at my report of the probe conference and live in some hands, and then join us in 12 minutes after the break. Thanks. Should have pressed stop on the record. Yeah. Yes, you can indeed, yeah. Nick. That's great. Right. Thank you. Right. And that's where we'll take our commercial break. And that's where 